With Capella University's FlexPath learning format, you can earn your degree online at your own pace and get support from people who care about your success. Imagine your future differently at capella.edu. Have you heard? McDonald's, the burger OG, took their classic burgers back to the kitchen and they've come out hotter, juicier, and tastier. Onions added at the grill, perfectly melted cheese. Plus, the burger icon, the Big Mac, now has more Mac sauce. Mmm, just how good are these burgers? Rubble, rubble. Yep, they're so good they got the hamburglar's attention. Better get down there before he eats them all. Ba da ba ba ba. Available at most restaurants in this area. This episode is brought to you by AARP. Ten years from today, Lisa Schneider will trade in her office job to become the leader of a pack of dogs. As the owner of her own dog rescue, that is. A second act made possible by the reskilling courses Lisa's taking now with AARP to help make sure her income lives as long as she does. And she can finally run with the big dogs. And the small dogs, who just think they're big dogs. That's why the younger you are, the more you need AARP. Learn more at aarp.org slash skills. This isn't your average business podcast, and he's not your average host. This is the James Altucher Show. Welcome to another episode of my favorite things, and I'm going to talk about a few of my favorite things. What does it mean to be a favorite? Well, it means... I'm super excited about recommending it. It might mean something I was excited about just this past week or something I've been doing research on. So without further ado, let's get started. I saw a movie. I had never heard of this movie. Someone recommended it to me. It's a movie from 1989. It's called Lean on Me. It's like a young Morgan Freeman. And I love this movie. I would highly recommend it. By the way, I knew of the song Lean on Me and... This was a movie named Lean On Me. I had never even heard of the movie, but Lean On Me, I would highly recommend the guy who sang Lean On Me, which is Bill Withers, it's most incredible singer. He sang some of my favorite songs uh, like uh, Grandma's Hands and um, Hope She'll Be Happier. They're very sad songs. Like you almost want to cry when you listen to them, but he's just got this beautiful voice. And Sometimes I stand in front of a mirror and try to imitate his voice. He's got a very like smooth kind of voice. But what I really admire about Bill Withers is he was disgusted with his record label. I think it was Columbia Records. And they kept, as he became more and more famous, they kept trying to control the the music he wanted, he, he should do. Like they thought he would be, oh, do be more, you'll be more popular if you do X, Y, or Z. And he, meanwhile, he's saying to them, you just release an album by Mr. T, an actor, and you're not releasing the album I want to do, and I'm a professional at this with a bunch of Grammys and I've sold millions of records. So he quit the record label, and I don't think he ever really performed again. Like, he did a little bit here and there, but he basically left the the musical business. Also, he wasn't like some young kid when he broke out. He was 32 years old when his first song came out. So not that that's old, but shows that, you don't have to be like 19 years old and beautiful to have a, a great career in the music business. So I really admire this guy. I listen to all his songs, Bill Withers, but the movie Lean on Me with Morgan Freeman, I think it's the best acting I've ever seen him do. And he basically plays, uh, uh, it's based on a true story of a rundown high school in Patterson, New Jersey, right near where uh, I grew up actually. And he becomes the principal and, you have to you have to see the movie. I'm not giving anything away, but great movie. I just saw it this week. Uh, Jay, first, did you see any movies this week? Oh yeah, last week, uh, this weekend actually, I saw this movie called Argyle. Have you heard of it? Argyle. I've heard of Argo, but not Argyle. Argyle, so Argyle is like kind of like a sweater pattern <laughs> for wasps. Uh, y- yes, right. I think, but the movie is basically it's like a it's like a spy plus novel. Plus uh, comedy, like it's a lighthearted uh, spy. Have you heard of the Kingsman? The movie, yeah, yeah. So it's yeah. by the same. I would I would say the same, almost the same production team. I think the same editor, 
same producer, same director, sort of in the same wow. sort of. It's got an all all star cast. It's I got know Samuel L. Jackson, yeah, exactly. Sam Rockwell, Brian Cranston, Henry Cavill, Dua Lipa, who I don't know. I don't know who that is, but I've heard the name a lot. She's a singer. And John Cena is a professional wrestler. He's in it. Yep. Wow, that's crazy. And also, when's the last time you seen? When's the last time there is a lighthearted spy movie? Like John, like James Bond, get like more and more and more intense, right? Like you know, it used to be like fun sort of spy movie that people can watch, but now like the last one with Daniel Craig is like so intense and stuff like that. So this is like lighthearted, like comedy a little bit. All right. Well, because I outsource all of my critical thinking to the internet, I'm gonna use Google to uh, search spy comedy films. You ever think about that? Like every new technology that's developed, and I'm not being anti-technology. Uh, I think technology is great and it, it improves my life almost every new thing that comes along. But basically with GPS, we outsource our ability to find things. With calculators, we outsource our math ability. With Google, we've outsourced our memory. And now with AI, we're starting to outsource our critical thinking. So, okay. so best 15 best sky comedy films ranked and you have the man who knew too little with bill, bill murray i've never even heard of that i never movie. heard of that uh get smart with, oh yeah uh, steve carell yeah i didn't i didn't want to see it because i like the tv series from the 60s but it was uh, great. mr and mrs smith oh yes that was fun too uh austin powers of course all right oh, wait. let's Hold see up. i'm just, just scroll to number one is austin power considered a spy movie though I, I I think it's not, but oh, and look, guess what? Number one is, guess, Ag Agal. No, Kingsman. Kingsman, dude, have do you got to watch Kingsman? Kingsman is such a fun movie. So like, you All right. you don't have too much substance it. in it, but like, like it's a, like a family f uh, fun movie. Just watch it with your family, with your kids, with Robin. It's it's so much fun. You have to watch Kingsman one, and then Kingsman two, and then you know the prequel to Kingsman. They have like a whole universe they're building it upon on it. Okay, so my recommendation on movies was was a serious, well acted, <laughs> well written movie based on a true story. Lean on me, starring Morgan Freeman, one of Morgan Freeman's first, I think. And yours is light hearted, yes, spy comedy. Which who knows? I'm not judging, and I will see it. I will watch it. My other uh, pick for the movies, though, and this was the one I saw about a month ago, was Roman J. Israel. Oh, uh, that's the name of the movie. Starring Denzel Washington, a lesser known Denzel Washington movie. First off, I think Denzel Washington might be my favorite actor. Uh, I've been going through a phase where I'm basically just watching one by one every single Denzel Washington movie. And like, I love American Gangster. I love, I just love every movie he's in. And uh, The Equalizer, have to recommend those. As we talked about Ip Man last week, yep. The Equalizer movies are, are incredible, just as good as Ip Man, I think. Well, it depends. If you're, if you're super into kung fu movies, then it man over Equalizer. But Roman J. Israel, he plays kind of this almost nerdy, on the spectrum, sort of civil rights lawyer, defense lawyer, doesn't really know how to communicate with people. And he, he's, he, he just makes $500 a week as a lawyer. And then suddenly his boss, who was always kind of like shielding him from the real world, dies and he can't get a job he doesn't know what to do and it's really interesting what happens a little again a little older movie denzel washington though one of his best i think roman j israel did you ever listen jay did you ever listen to the podcast uh it was called it had a great name it's called uh denzel washington is the greatest actor yeah. ever period i i heard about it but uh because we talk about it all the time but uh, i never watch it i because i love the name of it i love the fact that they right that the word the word period is part of the title it's great right uh so and then i saw a tv series this past week like we robin and i binge watched for three straight days this tv series uh my daughter molly recommended it to me and it's called pen one five p-e-n one five we watched it i think on amazon but it's it was produced by hulu so i don't quite understand it but pen one five and it's 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 worth seeing it's 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 basically it reminds me of the tv series freaks and geeks which was oh. one of judd apatow's first ever uh shows slash movies and freaks and geeks i should add 
is almost a historical sitcom to watch. It only lasted for one season and then NBC canceled it. But it's the first, Judd Apatow wanted to hire all new actors. And so here are some of the new actors he hired for Freaks and Geeks. James Franco had never acted before. Mm -hmm. Seth Rogen, Jason Segel, and Martin Starr, who's in Silicon Valley. Uh, Lin Linda Cardellini, who was, is in a ton of stuff. You'll recognize her once you see it. But it's interesting that Seth Rogen and James Franco, this is their first appearance on acting on any show or movie. But anyway, Pen15 is a little like Freaks and Geeks. It's basically about two 13-year-old girls surviving seventh grade. And that, if that sounds like awful to you, believe me, it's not awful. Like at first, why would I watch that? But A, my daughter recommended it. She has good taste. But C, I saw that the Lonely Island guys were producing it. So Lonely Island is Andy Samberg like, yeah. and and his friends. You might remember them from uh, the, 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 the very first song to ever go viral on YouTube. The first song to have over 100 million views on YouTube was a funny song by Andy Samberg called um, uh, Lazy that? Sunday. Mm -hmm. It was him and uh, Chris Darnell, something like that. And uh, and then, of course, he's on Brooklyn 99. Yep. He's done a bunch of movies. He was on Saturday Night Live. Super funny guy. But Lazy Sunday was great. But anyway, I didn't even know he was producing shows. So he produces the show Pen15. And the, the two women who write it, it's about their experiences as 13-year-olds. And they play themselves. There are two women who are 38 years old and they play themselves as 13-year-olds um, and you really believe they're 13 years old. It's kind of funny because you, you, it's not until like halfway through that I sort of realized, oh, they're, they're not 13 years old. And uh, one of them, Maya Erskline, she's now starring in the TV series Mr. and Mrs. Smith. So, yep. I mean, and they, they won a bunch of Emmys for Pen15. It was just on tw in 2023, just last year. But it was really great. There's two seasons. They, they It wasn't canceled. They specifically planned on it being two seasons. And it's really worth watching. It's, 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 it's funny in this kind of almost cringy way sometimes because 13-year-old seventh graders are often cringy. And it really reminded me of not only of my own experiences at that age, but then I thought about my, my daughters when they were that age. And, and uh, it's a very sweet show. That's so, cool. And, and funny. That's yeah. cool. I started watching and, Atlanta. Oh my God, that is the best show ever. It's a sitcom starring um, Childish Gambino. I always forget if he's Danny Glover or Donald Glover. I think Donald Glover. Oh, by the way, he's the Mr. Smith yep. in, Mr. <laughs> in Mrs. Smith. And Maya Erskerlein is Mrs. Smith. So that's funny. So that the two shows we're watching are both somehow connected to a TV show we didn't watch, which is Mr. Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Smith. I guess now we're going to have to watch that. Yeah. But I would say Atlanta is probably the most creative sitcom ever made. And it has a lot of great competition for that, including Curb Your Enthusiasm, Dave, F Freaks and Geeks, Arrested Development, Larry Sanders Show, and some other classics. Atlanta is, is, is really just a great story, but great experiments that don't disrupt the story. Really funny, well acted. Donald Glover is just amazing in it. And it's just an all around good show. And just by coincidence, I live near Atlanta. Yeah, so, but isn't and so, it, so do but, you. But Atlanta, it's a little bit more greedy compared to all the other shows that you just mentioned, isn't it? Oh yeah, definitely. Like it's well, people will see yeah, we'll they have see to it watch when, it when they see why. Yeah. Yeah. But um, all right, so Atlanta, Pen 15, lean on me. Maybe Argyle, I'm not convinced so you have to watch it Agal. i i will watch it. i will watch but it I have and to, then so i have to say i also watch a uh, spirited away as well this past weekend you know spirited away so okay that's an animation what's it studio ghibli how do you say it's ghibli yeah ghibli yeah g-h-i-b-l-i something like that yeah and it's probably the best animated movie i've ever seen I, but again i saw it around 20 years ago is that possible did it come it out is. more than 20 it years ago came out in 20, uh, it came out in 2001 or 2000 yeah, I used to watch that all I've probably watched that 10 times. It's it's really the animation is just great. I don't know if they do animation like that anymore. No. What's the most recent movie by that studio? Uh The Boy and the Heron? Boy and uh, I, I don't know. Yeah, the how how do you how do you pronounce H E R O N? 
Uh, I think Heron. Yeah. Yeah. The Boy and the Heron. It just came out. Um, people loved it. Ninety-seven percent on Rotten Tomatoes. It's by Studio you, Ghibli. You can't. It's almost impossible to hate that movie. Sorry to interrupt you. Oh yeah, yeah. It's impossible to hate that studio. The studio is is good, and also like this type of movie, it's just heartwarming, and it always takes me off the reality. Like sometimes when I watch movie, I want I don't want to watch something too real, too close to reality. You know. Yeah, like you know, it's interesting. Most movies are very visual, and then you get a feeling. For based on the acting and the writing, it it creates the emotions inside you, the emotions inside you while you're watching it. But Studio Ghibli, just the way it's animated, also creates this emotion that's really kind of, to use Robert Greene's word, sublime. Like it's yeah. a very sublime kind of movie. Oh man, I love these sponsors when I wish I had started this company myself. Our friends at ZipRecruiter, they did a recent survey. They found that the top hiring challenge that employers face for 2024 is a lack of qualified candidates. There's nobody out there. Everybody, all the qualified candidates have jobs already. But if you're an employer and you really need to hire, here's the good news. ZipRecruiter has smart tools and features that help you find more qualified candidates fast. And right now, you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash James, J-A-M-E-S. ZipRecruiter's tools and features help you find the best people for your roles. Here's what happens. You post your job, the manager who's doing the hiring posts their job, and ZipRecruiter's powerful matching technology scours like every site on the internet and shows you the candidates whose skills and experience match the job. And you could use ZipRecruiter's invite to apply feature, just a single button. You could send all the top candidates a personalized invite to encourage them to respond to your job post. I actually tried ZipRecruiter as a potential employee and filled out all the forms and blah, blah, blah. I still get emails to this day, really fascinating jobs where people, they want me to uh, go for an interview. Now, I just wanted to experience what the ZipRecruiter experience was like, but it's really fascinating. I wish I had used it when I was younger. And I wish I had used it as an entrepreneur when I was first hiring people for my first several businesses. Let ZipRecruiter help you conquer the biggest hiring challenge, finding qualified candidates. See why four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. Just go to this exclusive web address right now and try ZipRecruiter for free. ZipRecruiter.com slash James. Again, that's ZipRecruiter.com slash James. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. If you're a man, do you ever get just a little bit curious about men's healthcare products? Like for instance, treatments for erectile dysfunction or hair loss or weight loss and, and other things, but it's always just like a little bit uncomfortable to go to the doctor's office for that, or to wait online at a pharmacy for the appropriate medicine that you might get prescribed. Well, I am so happy this next sponsor is sponsoring this podcast. You don't have to do any of that waiting around in doctor's offices or pharmacies if you use HIMS, H-I-M-S. HIMS is changing men's health care. They provide simple, convenient access to science-backed treatments for erectile dysfunction, hair loss, weight loss, anything else. The entire process is 100% online. You can get a new routine of improving your overall health faster. Now, and this is the key part, if prescribed, your medication ships directly to you for free and indiscreet packaging. No insurance is needed, and you go online to talk to a doctor, the whole thing. You can manage your plan on the HIMSS app, track progress, learn more about your conditions, and how to treat them from leading experts. Start your free online visit today at hymns.com slash James. That's H-I-M-S dot com slash James for your personalized treatment options. Hymns.com slash James. Prescriptions require an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if appropriate. Restrictions apply. See hymns.com 
slash James for details and important safety information. Subscription required. Price varies based on product and subscription plan. There's something else I did completely different this week, which is I wanted to research again for, for my kids. I wanted to research websites. I always tell my kids, oh, why don't you try making money online? But I never have really evidence to back it up. So I wanted to research some websites where they could potentially make some money. I found what I expected to find, which is that, so on Instagram, there's all these accounts that go to these websites and you can make $5,000 a week. So a lot of those websites that those accounts refer to are just BS or they're scams or you don't really make, you might make a dollar a week, but not $5,000 a week. But there's, there's two that I think you might have a chance. One is Audible. So you go to acx.com, which is Audible's kind of backend website. You make an account, you click on the button that says find projects. So that means projects are books that have been written where the author doesn't want to read the audio book. Why wouldn't the author want to read the audio book? It is really un unpleasant to read an audio book. Like I always, I can't, I can't schedule anything before or at when I I've read every one of my audio books and I can never schedule anything before several days before or several days after, because I got to rest my throat before. And then my throat is just shot afterwards. And it's about two days to read an audio book. Uh, you know, let's say it's around 60 or 70,000 words and my throat's hurting so much afterwards, but that's why authors do, that, that creates an opportunity. So you could make, you honestly could like a romance novel that would take you about two or three days to read. You could probably get paid four or $5,000 in a few days reading an audio, reading a romance novel, for instance. And there's hundreds and hundreds of projects at any given point where you get get paid anywhere from a hundred dollars to like five thousand dollars to read that book so that is a site where you could potentially make money from home or in a studio or whatever and and make your own hours and so on another one a site that i found text broker t-e-x-t broker.com and it's a site for writing reviews so let's see it's like you can write actually you can write basic articles, in-depth articles. It's kind of like a marketplace where people who need content pay people who write content. So it's not just reviews. I, I take that back. It's, it's articles. It's also, it's all sorts of things. So I should have, I should have had some examples, but I you have to fill out like a whole questionnaire, uh, to apply and, and so on. But apparently I've, I've Googled around. Apparently you can make some pretty good money per week on tax broker and there's always stuff to do. So I've actually hired someone once to write a book for me, not a book that I am proud of. Uh, I wanted to, I wanted to do an experiment as I always do. And I wanted to see what would happen if I completely plagiarized 50 shades of gray, except I used, except I used an, um, a synonym for every word. So instead of saying, you know, um, the, the, oh, I, I had a test at school. I would say I was taking an exam at my high school or whatever. So I would, I, I wanted to, I wanted to, so nobody would actually see any words that were in 50 shades of gray, but it would be the exact same book word for word, except every word was a synonym from the original 50 shades of gray. And you know, now that I'm thinking about it, I can't even remember what I called it. Cause it's on Amazon. Then I self published. So I paid some guy like $500 and, uh, he did this work in about a week. I don't know how he did it so fast. Probably used some premature AI thing. Jay, do you remember what I, I called? Do you even know this, that I did this? Yeah. 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 I, I, I designed a cover. It's something worth the, Oh, you designed the cover. Okay. Well, yeah. let's, I can't remember. What's the book called? I can't remember what is the book called, but, uh, you use a fake name, uh, Jackie something, Jackie Ling or something. Oh yeah, no, I used something that was the initials for J.K. Rowling. Yeah. So, John Kenneth Rowling, maybe. No, no, or... no. It's Jackie King something. So Jay, Jay, thank you for finding the book. I was just disconnected from the podcast, and that allowed you time to find the book. So the name of the book is "How to Satisfy a Billionaire" by Jackie King, and I just want to read the first sentence. 
I frown with dissatisfaction at myself in the mirror. Damn my hair. It simply won't work out the way I want. And damn Cindy Woodworth for being sick and subjecting me to this experience. I ought to be concentrating on my last most decisive tests, which are one week from now. Yet here I am attempting to brush my hair into the style I want. So let me see, what's the first sentence of Fifty Shades of Grey? Because it should be the exact same, but with different words. Well, also I'm curious, like what's the FK so score of this one that you did? Oh, that is a good question. So the FK score, the Fisher Kincaid score, is a, a, a Fisher Kincaid calculator will take the whole text of your book or, or article or story or whatever, and will tell you the Fisher Kincaid score of it, which will tell you the, the grade level that you're writing at. And people think, oh, the better the book, the higher the grade level. That's not true. If you write a book or an article or a blog post or whatever, that's at like a 10th grade level or an 11th grade level, that is a horrible, horrible book. Ernest Hemingway's book, Old Man in the Sea, which actually is literally one foot away from me. It's right in front of me. Old Man in the Sea, one of the best books ever written and probably caused him to win the Nobel Prize in 1952, I think, it is written at, I believe, a fifth grade level. So whenever I write, and particularly whenever I write a book, I am constantly checking the Fisher Kincaid score to see I am no higher than a sixth grade level. But I'll check the FK score in a second of my classic book that someone else wrote. Okay. But first, I want well, to see, you... I want to see the first sentence of uh, Fifty Shades of Grey. Oh, uh, let's see if I can find it. All right. While you're finding it, can I can I can I read you something that's really good? So we got five. You get a five five star review on Amazon for the. You're book. kidding. Yes. So this, uh, <laughs> this person, I'm pretty sure it's like a bot, but uh, this person named Aristotle Case, and the five star review. One of the best books I've ever read. And it says, <laughs> an incredibly gripping, original, and sexy story told from the perspective of a girl plagued by, uh, with the monotony, uh, monotony of everyday life. When a chance opportunity allows her to step outside of the mold, Brenda dares where lesser women might cover. Another brilliant work by Jackie King, story of a shy girl, <laughs> <laughs> proves that provocate, provocative fiction is still alive and well. And two, there you go. two people found that helpful. There you go. Well, okay. So, so again, uh, the, the first sentence, I frown with dissatisfaction at myself in the mirror is, is from, uh, uh, how to satisfy a billionaire. And the first sentence of 50 shades of gray is I scowl with frustration at myself in the mirror. Okay, he left mirror, but I don't know. Maybe there's no synonyms for mirror. mirror. I scowl with frustration at myself in the mirror. And, and this, again, this is the second sentence of Fifty Shades of Grey. Damn my hair. It just won't behave. And damn Catherine Kavanaugh for being ill and subjecting me to this ordeal. I should be studying for my final exams. Whereas in the classic book, How to Satisfy a Billionaire, the, se the second sentence was, Damn my hair. Okay, he left that. It simply won't work out the way I want. And damn Cindy Woodworth for being sick and subjecting me to this experience. I ought to be concentrating on my last and most decisive tests. So anyway, you could, and I don't recommend that book. I would give it one star. It was an experiment. And guess what? It hardly sold any copies at all. How many reviews does it have, Jay? Six reviews. All right, well. But like, but. That's, that's but more reviews than some of my books. Some of, I think it's one review, but six ratings. So people can rate, right? They don't oh, have to read yeah, they can on, rate. On yeah. Good, good books or whatever. No, no, on Amazon. You know, you know why I, th I was thinking I was JK Rowling? There's another book I once wrote. Uh, I wrote, I wanted to see, I did another experiment a few years earlier than this. Uh, I wanted to see if I could write a book, write and publish a novel in a weekend. And I'm not going to bother finding this book, but I wrote, a, I wrote the autobiography of Prince William's son. So it was called, all right, now I got to find it. The autobiography. And it was, a, it was, the idea is it's, it was an autobiography, but it was only three days old. <laughs> uh, it's so, it's so underappreciated this book that Amazon's not even filling in the blanks. Okay. The autobiography of Prince George Alexander Lewis Windsor, because that's his full name, Prince William's son. And uh, 
It got 15 ratings. It has 2.9 stars. And it's only 31 pages, which just, I wanted to show too. You could just write, I call it a novel or an autobiography, whatever. I have the Kindle edition. And I did it in a weekend. I published it July 31st, 2013, just two months after I published Choose Yourself. And the top review is a one-star review by G. Kenny Burroughs. I wonder why, what is the G is? I guess George. It's one star. It's titled, the review is titled Rubbish. Suggestions in this book are crude and ludicrous. I would not recommend it to anyone, though, anyone even though it was a freebie. Uh, it's, that guy must be uh, British. Yeah. And then, but another one is, okay, this is three stars by Marianne Anderson. Not bad for a three-day-old baby. Because, of course, <laughs> it's, it's, I think he's typing it out to his butler, who is John Kenneth. John Kenneth Rowling wrote the forward and like his, his valet or whatever. So, and another, oh, here's a five star interesting concept. So, anyway, t- these are not recommendations. <laughs> Although, actually, this one was the kind of good. I, I had a fun time writing that one. But let's move on to the, my really my favorite things the, How to Satisfy a Billionaire and this autobiography are not among my favorite things. I just want to make that clear. I am kicking myself because this is back in the nineties. The CFO of a major company asked me if I can create a web dashboard for all the key metrics of his company, like everything from revenues, earnings to specific contracts and specific deals and how each department was doing and so on. I felt like I could have done it, but I didn't really want to do it. So I said, no, NetSuite which did do it around that time and, and started as a company is now a multi multi billion dollar company. And of course they went public and then they were acquired by Oracle and they did a really good job. And I'm so happy that they're sponsoring this podcast. Listen, when a business gets to a certain size, it does start to crack a little bit. You start to see the little cracks, things you used to do in a day are taking a week. You have to look up things manually. You have to ask the right people. You don't have one source of truth. If this is you, you need to know these three numbers, 37,000, 25, and one. 37,000, that's the number of businesses which have upgraded to NetSuite by Oracle. NetSuite is the number one cloud financial system streamlining accounting, financial management, inventory, HR, and more. 25, NetSuite turns 25 this year. That's 25 years of helping businesses do more with less, close their books in days, not weeks, and drive down costs. One, because your business is one of a kind. So you get a customized solution for all of your KPIs in one efficient system with one source of truth. Manage risk, get reliable forecasts, and improve margins. Everything you need to grow all in one place. And again, this is really important. It is so convenient when there's more data than ever about how well a business is doing. And you need to know your numbers if you're going to outpace the competitors or if you're going to succeed at all. NetSuite is that dashboard to do this. It's, it's really key no matter what size your business is. Right now, you should learn what your key metrics are. And so right now, download NetSuite's popular KPI checklist designed to give you consistently excellent performance absolutely free at netsuite.com slash James. That's netsuite.com slash James to get your own KPI checklist, netsuite.com slash James. Have you heard? McDonald's, the burger OG, took their classic burgers back to the kitchen and they've come out hotter, juicier, and tastier. Onions added at the grill, perfectly melted cheese. Plus, the burger icon, the Big Mac, now has more Mac sauce. Mmm, just how good are these burgers? Rubble, rubble. Yep, they're so good they got the hamburglar's attention. Better get down there before he eats them all. Ba da ba ba ba. Available at most restaurants in this area. I wanted to recommend this one book that has been a favorite of mine for a long time, actually. And I, I probably reread this about once a year, which is How I Found Freedom in an Unfree World 
by Harry oh. Brown. Now, Harry Brown is an interesting character. He was like a libertarian, I guess. He was the libertarian candidate for president at one point, I think in 2000. And I don't care about his political beliefs at all, but it was just, he talks about freedom in every possible way. Not, it's not a political book. It's like a, it's almost a self-help book, but not quite. But he talks about these things called boxes. And a box is any situation that restrains your freedom. So for instance, uh, a bad job. If you, if you think you're obligated to stay at your job, that's like, and you hate it, that's a box. Like Jay is in a box right now being the podcast producer here. Exactly. Or if you're, if you're stuck in a bad marriage or if you don't enjoy like the college you're at or the relationship you're in or some social obligation you have to go to, these are all types of boxes. And his point is, is that you're paying a price to stay in that box. So for instance, if you don't like your job, the price you're paying is that you could potentially be in another job. And so his whole point is, is that every situation that restrains your freedom, there is a price you're paying to stay in that situation. And there's a price you can pay to get out of that situation. And so he, he suggests, and I'll, I'll just read this real quickly. If there's a box in your life, big or little, let me suggest a simple method of putting it in focus. Take a few minutes away from everything else. Find a comfortable chair in a quiet room where you can consider the problem without interruption. First, identify the box. And even though this is sort of obvious, um, this is me talking, even though this is sort of obvious, a lot of people don't do this. I don't often do this. What is it that's causing you the discomfort? For example, suppose you've lied to someone and now find it difficult to maintain the lie. You're no longer able to express yourself freely for fear of saying something that would contradict the lie. Or perhaps your weekends are continually interrupted by relatives who drop in and monopolize your only free time. Or maybe you've made a con commitment to contribute money to a particular cause, but now you wish you were free to spend the money elsewhere. Whatever it is, identify the discomfort the box causes. Next, think of what you would do if you weren't in the box. At first, the only advantage you could think of might be the absence of the discomfort. But in some way, the box is preventing you from doing something you'd prefer to do. And if it were removed, you'd be free to take advantage of desirable alternatives. Imagine the box gone, and then imagine what you do once you were free of it. Blah, blah, blah. The next step is to identify the price it would take to get out of the box. As I said earlier, it may not have even occur to you that there is a price that would get you out, but there is always a way out. If you were to walk out of the box right now, what would it cost you? What would happen that you've been dreading? The price could be fearful or it could be trivial, but there is a price that could get you out of the situation. If you lied to someone, you may have to admit that you lied to get out of the box. If so, the price might be the shame of admitting the lie or the loss of the person's friendship or the time involved to reestablish a reputation for honesty or possibly all of those things. The price might be a con confrontation with someone, such as telling your spouse you don't want to remain married, telling your boss you want a better arrangement if you're going to continue to work for him, or breaking off a relationship with a friend or relative who brings you only grief. Identify what you have to do in order to end your present discomfort. Then picture yourself paying that price. It may be painful just to think about it, but try. And his point is, as you go through these mental exercises, it'll get less and less painful to imagine yourself paying that price and at the end, you'll identify three situate three elements of the box. What you're paying by remaining where you are, two, what it will cost to get out, and three, what you could do once you're out. And then he just he talks about different traps, different boxes. What does it mean to be a quote unquote expert? There's titles like uh let me see, go to the table of contents. The group trap, the government trap, the despair trap, the rights trap, the utopia trap why you are not free, identity traps. Anyway, I highly recommend as a book to improve your life, whether you follow the ideas in it or not. I don't always follow every idea in this book, but it's just a, a very fresh, enlightening way of thinking. And I highly recommend it, How I Found Freedom in an Unfree World. Uh, another yeah, book. I just, oh, go ahead. I just bought Jay. the book. I just bought the book. I was that convincing. I'm glad. Yeah, it's very convincing. Yeah. So it's it's really good. It's been an inspiration to me over the years or decades. And just also I'll say I read a pretty good novel this past week, How to Stop Time by Matt Haig. And it's about a guy who has an unusual illness, which is that 
he he ages at a rate of about 15 to 1 compared with everyone else. So he only looks one year older every 15 years. And so he's about 400 years when the, when the book's written. And I mean, the main character is, is about 400 years old when the book starts. And it's a very enlightening novel. Matt Haig, H-A-I-G, is a very good novelist. And I, I love this book. Uh, Jay, you read any good books this week? Uh, I, I'm reading I'm reading it very slowly, but uh, I'm trying to finish uh, Clear Thinking by uh, by our friend Shane Parrish. Shane Parrish. Oh, yeah. Parrish? Shane was a great guy. Great podcast. Yeah. A great it book. Came, came on. But uh, I do have one thing that uh, that one top my favorite topic to talk with my friends, and I don't know how I feel about it. Do you remember you you did an episode with Merrick, your good friend, about numbers? Everyone has a number in life. Right? A number like a financial number of where they would they feel comfortable they would retire. Yeah. So I spoke to my you know uh, a couple friends a, a couple of my friends. I'm like, okay, uh, what's your numbers? Like, what 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 would you want to make uh, a year? They're like, I don't know. And then I'm like, oh, I, ideally, if I could, I would maybe want to make about five to $10 million. And then they're all like, isn't that too much? Do you really need five to $10 million? I'm like, I might not need it, but it's good to have it. It's good to, you know, dream for the moonshot. Well, what, and, what number did they think? Why did they think that? Let, let's just take $5 million. Let's take the lower boundary. Why right. did they think that $5 million was not enough? No, or, no, or, yeah, or, like, or it was too, too much. much. What, what did they think was the right number? So one of my friends making about like 60, 70. Mm -hmm. uh, she's like, they're like, well, I'm pretty comfortable where I am right now. Uh, if I make anything more, I would just donate to the charity. Um, and okay, so some of them so like she makes she makes sixty thousand dollars, and she yes. and that's and that's what she said. But does she? she I would say like kids. 70, 80. No kids, no kids. But like, okay, well, I'm just the problem like is guessing. kids. Kids add significantly, but okay. Let's just take let's just say eighty thousand a year is what she makes. So after taxes, uh, well, okay, let's just say eighty thousand. So right now in a checking account, what does your bank give you if you put money in a checking account? I think it's uh, point two, point three, four percent or so. Like it's very, very low. Uh, well, okay. Uh, I don't. I could know be what wrong though. So. Let me see. I'm just going to type Wells Fargo savings account. I'm outsourcing yeah. my thinking again, my memory exactly. to Google. Yeah. And then I was talking with a friend of mine, which is your enemy, because he works for I IRS. Oh, you have a friend in the IRS? Exactly. You didn't uh, tell so me he, that. I, I was about right, to like surprise the podcast, you. To, like... Shut the podcast down. <laughs> No, I'm just, no I'm just I was about to introduce you in person because he is very fascinating. He works for IRS, but on the estate department. So will, he will handle like people die and then he will handle all the, like how much. We should have him on the podcast them. if he's allowed to talk about it. Uh, but, I think he's allowed to, if you want to, I can hook it up. Well, just ask him. I don't, he's okay. probably not allowed as my, um, so. I think so, he's allowed to. Okay. So let me see why. Uh, okay. I've clicked four buttons that say view rates and I still haven't gotten to anything. Now it wants to put in my zip bank, code. That's how bank gets you. They're like, oh, we have higher rate, but uh, you have to click five buttons to get to the actual rate. But trust us, we will give you the best rate. Okay, so a million dollars or more in a platinum savings account is two and a half percent. Oh, but a seven month CD, fixed rate CD, well, seven months is not that long. That's about uh, 5%. So, okay, let's say she could get 5% on her money, your friend. And she needs to make eighty thousand a year, so she needs to have one point. Uh, wait, no, no. What's five? What's she needs to have four million dollars? That's her number. Yeah, she needs to, actually. She needs to have a little bit more because there's inflation. So, assuming like three or four percent inflation, she probably she, to make eighty thousand a year, uh, you probably need to have like five, six, seven million dollars in the bank. Right, but that's that's the but that's pre tax, right? Like if she, if she's making eighty k right now, like yeah, you know. but but the savings account also is is pre tax. You pay taxes right. on your um on, so I, so she's got to have about minimum. Oh wait, am I doing this wrong? 
I think I'm doing this wrong. Sorry. That's way too much, like four million dollars for 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 eighty. Yeah, no, no, no. She, uh, you're right. She needs like between two. She needs like between two and three million. Yeah. To, to like make eighty thousand uh, a year. Yeah, but like, uh, but she, but you know, we're just talking about like how much you want to make a year salary or whatever. But, but that's uh, it's related and, to the number though, right? Because. Yeah. Unless you're gonna unless you're gonna just spend all the money, but you you can't do that because you might live longer than you know. So you exactly. have to live off the interest. You can't dip into the money if you're not gonna do anything else for money. So she, she probably needs well to make eighty thousand a year right now. She would need mi minimum one point six million if she's gonna put it in these fixed rate CDs. Probably need a little bit more because you're gonna you need to have money that's not necessarily in CDs. So. She, she probably needs like two and a half million right now, but then taking into account inflation. So inflation, the value of, of your dollar is cut in half roughly every um, two years, three years, no, 30 years, 30 years. 30 years. Yeah, yeah, because it's 8%, right? No, inflation right now, I mean, inflation, the target rate of inflation is between two and 3%. Let's just, like right now, inflation is gotcha. at 3%. 3%, the way you figure it out, the way you figure out how much uh, prices how long it takes something to double in price is you take the percentage that's increasing and divide that divide 71 by that number. And it's about 20, you know, 23 years for the value of everything to get cut in half if inflation's at 3%. So assuming she's going to at least live another 30 years, she kind of needs roughly double the two, 2 million, you know, so she probably needs, yeah, she probably needs about 4 million is her number. Wait, as in like every year or like just in general? No, she probably she probably needs. Okay, she, I don't I don't know how to do the exact math. She probably needs between three and four million if she's gonna quit her job, live off the interest, and live for the rest com comfortably for the rest gotcha, of her life. Gotcha. And by the way, not increase at all her spending. So this assumes no kids, stuff like that. So that's why right. you could add a little bit, like okay, a kid's college education cost two hundred thousand dollars if she, if she's gonna send her kid to Harvard or whatever and uh, uh, so she's gonna need to have that much extra on top of the three million and and again she's the the money has to be big enough so that she can handle the inflation she probably needs to buy a house now to avoid inflation and rent like you could avoid a lot some inflation by buying things now that are gonna last you forever and then she can't ever move out of that house or if she does it's the house has to go up by inflation. So her number probably is between three and 4 million. So your 5 million is not that far off. Yeah. Like well, how, like, how else does she uh, expect to make 80,000 a year? Yeah. But like, uh, I, I'm talking about just making 5 million a year for myself. Like, like Oh, 5 million a year. Are you crazy? What do you need 5 million a year for? What? Well, okay. So, I mean, that's just, what I are you going to buy okay, with 5 million? Well, well, okay. So let's say, let's say if I marry someone, that have like some sort of medical conditions, like have to go to a hospital. Do, doesn't she have insurance? Yeah, but how much insurance cover? Okay, well, look, don't, <laughs> don't. So, so you need to make five million a year because you're going to be with some quadriplegic who's going to the hospital all the time. Like, is that I, what your plan I, is? I just, I just want, I want, like, like, I want to live comfortably. Like, like, okay, what? Like, what? Do you, okay, forget about the the invalid that you're marrying <laughs> like what what are you how are you gonna spend five million a year okay uh, first of all buy buy a couple of cars even buy a, a nice e house. okay okay how much is a car so, okay let's say let's say let's say nice okay i'm not going too crazy just like tesla or whatever how much Maybe is a like tesla? 50k it's like 50k like the, the no, more, okay, normal one buy, like buy the good five ones, of the Buy five of those cars every year that's two hundred fifty thousand dollars <laughs> you're not even getting close to five million well, yeah, but like, I, what, you're what not going like, to buy a house every year, and a house is equity. You get equity in a house, so you, you it's not it's not like you lose the money. You could t mortgage the money out of it eventually. But what else do you want to spend money on? Uh, food, flying food, around, flying around on on what? Uh, are you flying plane? around on like a, like your like, own like Boeing Taylor 747? Swift? Okay, well look. <laughs> so how much does a plane cost? Uh, I don't know how much the paint. Uh, what, a plane, 50, uh, like, a, like, like a, a good private plane, like a Boeing, like Taylor Swift's plane, probably costs like 150 million. But you could just use, uh, you know, there's plenty of 
net, yeah, the net jet, whatever. Jet leasing, like Wheels Up or Surf Air or NetJets right. is the most famous one. There's our old friend Jesse Itzler had marquee jets that he sold to NetJets. So you, yeah. you need a you need a hundred thousand dollars a year, uh, or realistically, you need like three or four hundred thousand a year, and you could you could take like ten vacations on private jets with that. Right. So wait, wait, okay, okay, so you, you don't so you, need. You, I would say even with someone with your extravagant tastes, the max you would need to make per year before taxes is two million. But that's only if you want to fly private everywhere and buy five Teslas and have the, have a 20,000 square foot uh, you know house in a suburb of New York City or something so cuz then your mortgage will be high but that's even high but i would say okay, okay if you really want to live like a billionaire meaning fly private everywhere have a big house have the most expensive car no one could tell trust me on this no one could tell if you're a billionaire or a, a single digit millionaire if you make 2 million a year, that is, that okay. is more than enough. And probably even making 1 million a year, you could almost act as if you were a billionaire. There won't be any difference between you and a billionaire in terms of your expenses. Okay. So, so two, so you, you think 2 million it's reasonable and also like not two, is it 2 million in cash or like, you know, just two net million in cash. Two million. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Uh, but, but that would mean your number is about 40 to 50 million that you'd have to have in the bank to retire. Now, so that's why mm. I'm saying that's the most extravagant you could possibly be. Most people, I think your five to 10 million was more accurate. Uh, okay, so I, so what, how much do you think like reasonably someone's number should be? Like like you you said, like, so five to 10 million, it's it's about right. I think I think if you have between 10 and 20, no one could tell, you could live a life and have a lifestyle where nobody could tell the difference between you and a billionaire, which means mm -hmm. basically you could do anything you want, except you can't buy expensive art. You can't buy a football team. You can't build a bunker in, in an Island you own off of New Zealand to protect against the apocalypse. So you just, but you can, you can fly private everywhere you want and you can, uh, uh, have a, the biggest, like your neighbors could be billionaires. You could buy a, a, a big house and live as comfortably as you want. And that's, that's if your number's between 10 and 20 million, if you're satisfied with less than that, though, there's nothing wrong with that. I think yeah. the minimum number is probably uh, 7 million in the bank. And that takes care of any medical situations, colleges for your kids, and you could live off the interest in general, or, or depending on your investment strategy, you could live off uh, what you make on investments. Okay. So I should strive for 7 million. It's a good number though. It's, I just, by the way, this is what, this speaks to the importance of really studying investing because the better investor you are, the less you have to have the, the lower your number is because you can make more on the money you have. Yeah. So not investing in Dogecoin and stuff like that will help. Yeah. Don't invest in Dogecoin. Although who's to say maybe it'll go up, but that's not a good investing strategy to invest in something that has absolutely zero, you know, fundamental value. Right, which so, I did a couple of years ago. So, <laughs> well, you probably have done well then, because Dogecoin, Dogecoin's done well. Uh, but it, it's like it's like what Annie Duke says, though, is that you can make a decision that makes you money, but it's still a bad decision, and vice versa. You can make a good decision that sometimes loses money, but the the decision making process was correct. Gotcha. gotcha. So, anyway, that is this week's my favorite things. Next week. I'll dive a little bit more into, or two weeks from now, I'll dive a little bit more into investing books and whatever other movie shows. Whatever. I find that I'm always, and send me recommendations because I am always looking for good TV shows to watch, movies to watch, both Pen15. By the way, if you write out Pen15, you know what the real name of the show yeah. is. But Pen15 and Lean On Me were both recommendations I got in the past two weeks and I, I love them. So thank you to... Molly Altucher, who gave me Pen15, and the woman who cuts my hair, who gave me Lean On Me. So, um, and Jay, thank you so much for producing this podcast. All right. You're my, you're my favorite podcast producer. You're my favorite host. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> All right. See ya.
McDonald's made the burger icon, the Big Mac, even more iconic. More Mac sauce, perfectly melted cheese, onions added at the grill. So good, your boy's already on the hunt. Rubble, rubble. Yup, it's Hamburglar good. Ba-da-ba-ba-ba. Available at most restaurants in this area. At Capella University, you'll get support from people who care about your success. From before you enroll to after you graduate. Pursue your goals knowing help is available when you need it. Imagine your future differently at capella.edu.